You're listening to Fraud Feed, your finger on the pulse of the latest news and trends in insurance fraud prevention, brought to you by the Coalition Against Insurance Fraud. Insurance fraud hurts everyone, and it's important to know how it can affect you and what you can do to fight against it. Now here's your host, Stephen Murphy. Welcome to Fraud Feed, everyone. I'm Stephen Murphy, and thanks for joining us for our latest podcast. This week, we're once again bringing you a story of a consumer who fell victim to fraud. But first, we're happy to announce Fraud Feed is now on iTunes. You can find it by searching for Fraud Feed in the iTunes Store. As we all know, insurance policies can be confusing to understand, and it's hard to know what policy is best for you. That's why a lot of us rely on insurance agents to help us choose a policy. Most insurance agents are honest and helpful, but there are a few bad apples. Some agents are fake. They have no license and try to sell you bogus coverage at your expense. Tracy Martin was enjoying a basketball game in Detroit when she got a surprising call from her husband. Her car was being towed from her own driveway. And the tow was perfectly legal. It turns out, Tracy had bought a phony auto insurance policy, and the insurance agent was fake as well. Someone calling himself Jonathan Brown approached Tracy. He lied that he worked for a local insurance agency and could get her affordable auto insurance. So Tracy gave the scam artist $2,000 to buy the policy. But then Tracy never saw her money or an auto policy. The so-called agent walked away with her money, leaving her high and dry without state-required auto coverage. Agent scams can cost you thousands of dollars and leave you dangerously without needed protection. Because Tracy didn't have proper auto insurance, her car was impounded by police. She can now only get it back if she buys it at auction. Fake agents like the so-called Jonathan Brown are clever. They print out a realistic-looking policy on their home computers and pass it off as a real policy. You would never know the difference. Legitimate agents are also in the scam business. They might sell you a policy, then pocket your premiums, but never buy the coverage they promised. Your premiums are stolen, and you're unprotected. Michelle Rayfield is head of the Fraud Bureau at the Ohio Insurance Department. She explains what premium theft can look like. The agent will ask the consumer to make the premium check out to them directly um, versus making it out to the insurance company, which is most common practice. Um, The agent will then deposit that money into their own account because the bank doesn't then question it, and then they pocket the money. Um, Because of that, we always tell people to make checks out to the name of the insurance company. And here's another scam you should watch out for. A dishonest agent will try to convince you to buy insurance you don't need. You could spend thousands of dollars that you don't have to, while the agent gets a large commission. Charles Starr, chief of the Insurance Fraud Bureau in Nebraska, explains. In a lot of cases, they seem to prey on senior citizens, uh, and they'll represent a product a lot of times uh, as something that will assist them and not perhaps burdening their family members. So they'll push products to senior citizens that may not be suitable. And, in fact, the only advantage for for anyone involved would be the agent, and, and that would be in the form of the commission that they receive for the product. The agent could also rip you off through something called churning. They convince you to cancel your existing life insurance policy and then replace it with a new one. The new policy usually isn't any better than the old one, but the agent gets a large commission on the sale. In fact, the new policy is often worse. Or, the agent secretly adds more coverage to your policy without telling you. This means you're paying higher premiums for coverage you don't need, while the agent walks away with more commission money. There's a lot of different ways to be ripped off, but you can fight back and make sure you stay protected. First off, check to see if the agent and insurance company have valid licenses you can contact your state's insurance department to make sure. Michelle Rayfield offers this advice. 
most of the departments of insurance across the country have an agent's licensing information available online and um, also post administrative actions taken on agents. So you can go ahead and basically do a, a little background check with the Department of Insurance to make sure you're dealing with um, an agent who's in good standing. STAR provides another good tip. Consumers really need to be aware of, uh, you know, that perhaps where product is being presented as a one-time offer or a limited offer, and the consumer should also receive documentation directly from the insurance company rather than the agent, uh, especially as it applies to some of the billing statements or annual statements, as well as the policy deliveries themselves. Next, and very important, Make sure you call your insurance company to confirm you have a policy in effect. And finally, make sure you know what your policy covers and what it doesn't. Read the policy closely before you buy anything. Get a second opinion from someone you trust. This is especially true if the agent is trying to sell you a new and more expensive policy to replace your current one. As with most insurance fraud scams, if you think you are dealing with a dishonest agent, report it immediately. Call your state's insurance department. That's all for this episode of Fraud Feed. I'm Stephen Murphy, and thanks for listening. If you want to learn more about agent scams, please visit our website at insurancefraud.org. That's insurancefraud.org. This has been Fraud Feed. Brought to you by the Coalition Against Insurance Fraud. Find more resources and listen to past episodes at insurancefraud.org. For questions or comments, email coalition at insurancefraud.org. We value your feedback. Please consider leaving us a review. And if you like this episode, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast feed or follow us on SoundCloud so you never miss a show. Thanks for tuning in.